Hello again, Darren Stewart with you with Stewart & Stewart Attorneys. We have a very special guest with us here today, uh, Lieutenant DJ Sheff with the Carmel Police Department. And uh, Lieutenant Sheff has uh, been the president for the past several years of NASRO, and I'll let you define that, National Organization of, of Police Officers. He's going to tell us a little bit about what NASRO is and what he's been doing with that, and, and we're going to talk about some back-to-school things, which is very important right now this time of year. Kids are getting ready to head back to school if they've not already and uh, touch on some of those things. But welcome, sure. welcome. Thank uh, you. Thanks uh, for having me. Chef. Appreciate your being here. NASRO, what is that? Well, NASRO is uh, the National Association of School Resource Officers, and it's an organization that collaborates school resource officers from across the globe for the purpose of training. Uh, there's a, it's a membership organization, but it's really a focus is on training school resource officers to make sure that we do the job the right way inside our school settings. And to help our, our students be successful. So resource officers in the school, uh, there, there, there are schools that have uh, police officers in schools, and then there are school systems that have actual police officers in schools. And, and Carmel's one of those school systems that you're actually police officers that are in the schools. That's correct. Okay. We, we have 21 officers in Carmel that are assigned to Carmel Clay Schools. Uh, we have a lieutenant, two sergeants, and then we have 18 school resource officers, one in every building, and then four at our high school. And the function of that is, the, fo the primary focus is building relationships with youth and bridging that gap between law enforcement and youth. They serve as a function of safety and, and precaution and response if it's absolutely necessary as well. Uh, but the primary focus of day-to-day -day action is building relationships with our kids and utilizing a triad function that involves the law enforcement piece, uh, a lot of behind the scenes stuff with law enforcement, guest speaking, standing in front of classrooms and presenting on a variety of topic topics, and, uh, and the mentoring piece, which is a sig significant role mm -hmm. uh, that, we, that we conduct as school resource officers. The mentoring piece, I would, I would presume that that would really give you an opportunity to develop relationships, uh, not only with just kids in general, but maybe ones that you're seeing that maybe need a little guidance uh, in, that, in that area. Sure, I mean, you know, our, our focus isn't specific on a, a group of children. We're very, uh, you know, our, our goal is to be uh, very diverse with who we, who we work with. Any of the students in our schools are people that we build relationships with. And the drive there, oftentimes we do have a, a, a collection of students that may visit us more often as a result of uh, circumstances that they've experienced. That kind of comes into the training for school resource officers where we work with adverse childhood experiences and trauma and uh, uh, working with students of, with, with uh, disabilities. Uh, a lot of different things that we do to ensure that we uh, have the skills we need to be able to mentor our students. Right, right. I think most of us in, in general population, general public, think of police officers as responding to a domestic violence situation or, or writing traffic tickets, uh, th those types of things, uh, chasing bad guys, that kind of thing. We don't always think of them being in our schools. And, and those officers, uh, I assume, get special training and ha really have a heart for kids. Uh, in helping them. Yeah, uh, school resource officers, a true school resource officer, an effective one, is a very carefully selected school resource officer and then very specifically trained in having the equipment that's necessary to do the business of law enforcement if it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. And it is a very uh, a wide range of responsibilities where it could be, uh, you know, working with a child who um, uh, is upset with a teacher all the way to experiencing trauma in the home, uh, child abuse cases and so forth or even uh, in, you know, uh, in the worst of cases that we hear across the country, these active threats that, that occasionally occur in our schools. Mm -hmm. Just the ability to be on campus and respond in a quick manner and being that first responder to take action right away. And with kids going back to school, I do want to talk a little bit more about the active threat uh, situation because we've heard a lot about that. But uh, the NASRO program, that's a national organization. I'm assuming it's all, not just Carmel, but all throughout Indiana, all throughout the, the entire country all the schools that have police officers like Carmel does in their schools, that's the organization that they all get together and exchange information and have training, correct? That's correct. We are, uh, uh, the membership is really globally, not just nationally. Okay. Uh, we have membership all across the, all across the world, um, but a lot across, across the country. Each state has their rules, uh, their, their specific laws pertaining to school resource officers, de de determining their training needs and so forth, but many of them, including the state of Indiana, require school resource officers to go through a 40-hour basic course through the National Association of School Resource Officers. Right, right. And I will tell you, folks, we have the honor of having uh, not only the uh, a resource officer that's been here in Carmel, but uh, as you're the president 
of Nashville. You've been, been the president for the last year that's, uh, or I, so. Yeah, the last two years I've last had the years. opportunity to, to serve as the board of the uh, board of directors president. Yeah. Yeah, quite an honor for Carmen and a lot of knowledge brought here to Carmel and we appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the the active threat uh, situation. You know, just recently, a, a couple of months back or so, uh, we had the, the the situation in Texas, and we've we've had several situations over the years with with kids uh, going into schools and having a shooting situation. What what's the best advice you can give to parents uh, uh, in helping their children deal with that situation and as, as they're headed back to school? What are the conversations we need to be having? I think it's certainly important to have the conversation uh, age appropriate and parents know their children better than anyone else so it's important for them to judge base that uh, their conversation off of what they know their child can handle uh, but for us as school resource officers we want to be a source of safety and comfort for our students uh, so letting them know that those school resource officers are people that they can go to and uh, bring concerns to them if they hear of something if they um, uh, are, are aware of a friend who's really struggling in some capacity. We want to know about that so that we can help uh, deter things of that nature initially. We want to try to prevent them if we can. And then we want to uh, make sure that we give appropriate help, health, often in the mental health capacity, uh, prior to any sort of tragedy like that occurring. So, so the parents' role uh, instill in their kids the, the, the get rid of that fear or that awkwardness of saying something. Be willing to say something. Absolutely, and we have we have tools here in Carmel, and uh, many school districts across the state of Indiana have uh, alert systems or anonymous alert systems in place in their school district that they can utilize to notify officials, whether it be the school administration, school resource officer, the district administration, that something isn't right, uh, a concern about another student, or a concern uh, whether it be a an act of violence or a mental health concern, or both. Mm -hmm. So as far as the kids go, what are the kind of things that as, as resource, what do the resource officers instruct the kids? What's some of the training uh, that you share with the kids? What should they be aware of? Share with us. Sure. Well, we tr our, our desire is to create personal accountability and personal empowerment. So school resource officers, again, different districts and different school agencies do things differently. But we, we try in Carmel to instill uh, the personal responsibility early on, decision making early on. So at the elementary level we're presenting curriculum on uh, how do I make appropriate decisions, who's responsible for the decisions that I make, who is the person that is the one person in my life for, for forever that gives me the opportunity to keep me the safest based off of my own decisions. And then we move into communication techniques. Uh, how do I communicate effectively? How do I hand, handle my body posture? How do I have my eye contact? Uh, the voice inflection, even all of that stuff to try to help help them communicate better and help them be more confident in their communication. And then into, as we get older grade levels, we present on drug prevention, education, vaping prevention, helping them under, under, understand the truth behind drugs and, and nicotine use. Uh, and then even into dating, uh, um, you know, safe dating, um, and, and, and then moving on to I'm getting ready to go to college. What do I? How, what do I need to know getting ready to go to college? So really, K to 12, we're we're in the face of and being able an opportunity to present to our kids to help them be successful. Well, that's very broad. There's a lot of areas you cover there. That sounds like uh, that's very helpful. We, if we if we drill down into the specifics of an actual event that could potentially occur that we've seen occur in other other in other states and other places. What's, do you have an education program for that? What, how do you uh, communicate that with the kids? Sure. So that's kind of part of that personal empowerment and, and piece. We want to empower people. And this goes for students, adults, uh, so our staff, uh, even community members. We know that law enforcement is not 100% of the time right there, right? We know that there's going to be a time lapse. Even if I'm in a building, there's going to be a small time lapse that we saw even in a neighboring community here in Noblesville a few years ago where uh, a teacher was able to respond appropriately and respond with personal empowerment to protect the students in the school. And that made a significant difference. So we want to give our students the tools, age appropriately, uh, the ability to be able to evacuate an area if it's appropriate to do so, the ability to be able to lock down into a, a classroom if it's safe in that classroom and they can prevent outside individuals from gaining access to that classroom, or in the absolute worst case scenario, if they have to do something to defend themselves. We don't want people to feel as if they have to wait for us to respond. If it is a life or death situation, we want to give the ticket of empowerment 
for our students, our staff, and our community members to take action if it's absolutely necessary. So what are some of the ways you do that? Do you have drills or things like, we think of fire drills and things like that? Sure, so early on in the year, normally what we'll do is we'll do some presentations and letting our students know what the practices we have in our schools and what we expect of them during our drills or in the event of a serious crisis. And I always explain to people that when we get on an airplane, the, that we always talk about these safety precautions as if the plane, you know, if the plane were to crash, how do we handle that situation? We don't anticipate the plane to crash, we don't expect the plane to crash, and we certainly don't hope for the plane to crash, but I need people to understand how to address it if the plane does crash. So in that same fashion, we do the same thing inside our schools. We don't hope for this to happen, we don't expect it to happen, but we need to prepare ourselves from kindergarten through 12th grade, and even all of our staff and community members, how are we gonna respond? in that fashion. So we, we will continually train uh, on, on uh, those techniques that they use to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, uh, you know, is there a, a number we can call or reach out if a parent has further questions about uh, what they can do or what they can talk to their children about, or if they want more information on what's actually being shared with their children, who, sure. who should they talk to? So our, the Carmel Police Department's phone number is 317-571-2500. And I'm happy to field a call if there's any questions or any concerns about what goes on in our school district. Uh, it, we have a, a very uh, uh, robust system that is in place and a very uh, powerful school resource officer program that I would consider likely one of the best in the country. Well, uh, all very important stuff, and, and uh, we're going to put a number on the screen for people to reach out if they need to uh, uh, talk to someone you're available to talk to as well. Parents might have a question of, of uh, some additional information of how to handle things with their kids and, and also might have questions as to what specifically is being uh, taught to their children. That, that's not a problem. You guys can answer those questions, Absolutely. feel those calls. Appreciate that. You know, we, we hope it, nothing like this will ever happen to us. But uh, I love what the department's uh, doing when you say the, the airline uh, analogy. It's uh, excellent to always be prepared for the worst that, you know, so you're, you're th there's already going to be enough confusion in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. So the more confusion we can eliminate, the better. But uh, you guys are doing a great job, and we really appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today, Absolutely. Lieutenant Chef. We appreciate it. Thank you.